quite interesting because the attacks on Aramco were attacks by uh, missiles that weren't stopped by any of the radars. The type of technology that the Iranians are using is actually in some ways a less advanced technology. You know, the Patriot missiles are not necessarily going to stop any of these projectiles. Um, and again, that the Houthis have been using coming out of Yemen. So uh, they're not going to go for a ground invasion. You know, the Iranians aren't going to move mass troops in order for you to have 14,000 troops that will retaliate. So in some ways, he's saying this is not your usual war. It's an asymmetrical war in some senses if you're going to have missile strikes, but also you have the impact on the region if you have tankers, for example, attacked as we saw in the summer. So he's being realistic, but at the same time, I think some people are asking them why are 14,000 troops coming? And it's much more about a political signal. It is a way of saying we did not act when there was the Aramco attack. We did not act on the tankers, but we may act next time. So it's much more about deterrence than actual if there was a military confrontation, and that would be the worst possible thing for the region in its entirety. How much pressure do you think they really are under in Tehran to make something happen here? Because you have the protests not just happening in Iran itself, but you mm -hmm. also have this uh, plethora of protests across the region in mm -hmm. Lebanon and Iraq as well, and mm -hmm. elsewhere. And mm -hmm. it's really interesting that in spite of the fact that there's so much fear, for example, in Lebanon in terms of uh, the economic situation, people are still out on the street. And certainly in Iraq, they're doing so. And, then, and frankly, it's continuing to be deadly and there shows no sign of stopping. Right. So I would assume that everybody in Tehran is quite nervous. And you see that from their statements, because now they're saying this is a huge conspiracy against Iran. You know, they want to blame Israel. They want to blame America. And they're also using brute force within their own borders against the protesters. Um, and they're nervous because, as you said, also their two main proxies, let's say, are those militias in Iraq and Hezbollah in Lebanon. And the protests have been going out in Iraq and Lebanon, not necessarily against Iran, but against the systems that Iran has been supporting. In Iraq, it's been very blatantly against Iran. People have been saying Iran, Iran out. The slogans are mainly driven against Iran because most of the people in power in Baghdad are there because of Iranian support. In Lebanon, it's much more about the system and just the, the general corruption that has happened, which of course Hezbollah and others benefit from. So the Iranian regime is nervous because they've got these protests. And so there's a rejection of this idea that Iran is the, the natural guardian for Shia Muslims or Shia Arabs, or that Iran is a natural ally that they can rely on. So that, that illusion has broken. At the same time, you're right in saying that they feel something has to give because, of course, the Americans pulled out of the nuclear pact. So Rouhani and his kind of entourage within the Iranian government are now discredited. They weren't able to deliver anything. And uh, Qasem Soleimani and the Revolutionary Guards are also discredited because their political projects in Iraq and Lebanon are falling apart. Does Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.